Hello friends out there in YouTube land. I'm Robert Ham with roberthamphotography.com and today I want to share with you how to fix something in Adobe Premiere Pro. So we're editing a wedding video and I noticed that there's some dust on my lens that I didn't see at the time. And this can happen pretty easily. We're out here at the beach. So you could get a little piece of trash or dust or something on your lens. Now, in Adobe Photoshop, we would just go ahead and heal this. In Lightroom, we'd also use the healing brush. In Photoshop, we could use the clone stamp tool. But the reality is, here, um, it's in this particular program, there could be a lot of hoops that you may have to jump through to get this done. Well, I'm going to show you the simplest way that I've found. And this works well on backgrounds that either don't have a continuing pattern, like bricks, or do have a continuing pattern like bricks. What I mean is, if you're able to match the pattern very regularly, then this will work. Like, for example, bricks, you could match a pattern from another part of the brick in the same area with the same exposure. Or, this works in an area of sky where we don't really expect to see a whole lot of variance. Notice there's not a lot of clouds here, and we'll be able to work with this very easily. So, the two rules we got to think about when using this technique is you need a consistent background, specifically with nothing much varying in the background, like in this sky, or in a pattern that's easy to match from one part of the image to another, as in bricks. You can use any other texture. Uh, that you'd like as long as they match as well. Um, I hope that made sense. So the first thing is, we're actually going to come over here. I'm going to select my uh, my V tool, just my regular selection tool. Actually, I had the C tool. I'm going to control Z. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to control C for copy. I want to copy it. I'm going to come over here to edit. I'm going to move my marker and I'm going to uh, click edit and then paste. Notice now I have another of the exact same image. Uh, what we're going to see here is that between the two, I need to come over here. I'm going to right click. I'm using my pen tool and I'm going to just unlink right there. This is going to allow me to select the sound and delete it. Okay. All I want is this part right here and I want it to properly sit directly on top of the next video. Okay. So now, since we've got this on top, you can see this is here. Our opacity, of course, is 100%, which is important. If we moved it along just a little bit, let's move it out to this way, we can see now that by toggling our opacity on and off, we should be able to have a, uh, a different... See how the other image behind it comes into play? Okay. You can use opacity effects to do some really cool things as well, but today we're just talking about getting rid of that image. Now that that's up there, I'm going to come over here, and I'm in my Effect Controls dialog, and I'm just going to change something about the position. Now, you could do a couple of things here, um, but for me, I just want to go ahead and move the top layer uh, video and just offset it some, and I usually do 900 just because. And see how I've got a duplication right here? That just lets me know now that this is moved and I can kind of see what I'm looking for. You don't have to do this step. I find that it's helpful for me. When I come over here, I grab my square opacity tool. Notice now, the reason I did that is I've got this bounding box, but if we look real close, we'll see that it's also offset about 60 pixels to the left. Very important. I can now grab this, okay? We did all of this manipulation in these effects control with our top video layer selected. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to bring it right over here. Now watch. I just want you to watch what happens to this part as we begin to move this part. Bingo. It's gone. Now if we come down here to the next one, you'll see it's gone. All right. So let's go ahead and toggle our opacity all the way off for our top layer. Okay, well, that's our bottom layer because I'm selected the bottom right now. Let me make sure that we select the top. When we toggle our opacity off for this particular layer, notice it comes back. We're looking to see how much is actually changing in the clouds. And because of we've chosen a part of sky that the video doesn't have a lot of uh, additional information for, there's not anything there really to screw it up, we can very easily just erase it just like that. So now... We've got this bottom track is muted. Great. You can see it's playing just fine. And then as compared to that. So there it is. And it's gone. And we've got some markers over here. 
So I just wanted to show you here, uh, in this particular is instance, what it looks like as this little item comes in and out of play. And you'll notice we're getting ready to hit a cue point where it's come into play. We can now see it, and then the opacity has come back. So all I'm trying to do is give you a running before and after of this. Obviously, we would do this, get rid of all these keyframes, and keep this part of the adjustment opaque the entire time. Guys, I hope that's been very helpful for you. I'm Robert Ham with RobertHamPhotography.com. Catch me over on Twitter at Rob Ham Photo. Same as Instagram at Rob Ham Photo. You can find me on both Facebook and YouTube at forward slash Robert Ham Photography. Hope this helps. Smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe.